Got to be the heavy favorite, right? All right, Tom, let's go up ringside and pick up the referee's instructions. The referee is Ishmael Quinones Falu. And he'll be talking to Koopman. I'm not sure in what language. He doesn't understand any English. His language is Flemish. Now Muhammad Ali looking over. He went over and took a strange look <laughs> at Koopman just a minute ago. He can't believe that he can't sight this guy because he can't understand him. All Koopman did all week was smile at everybody, including Muhammad Ali. He also winked at him. <laughs> Pick up the instructions now. Don't miss the bulldog days. And your name is Palou is the referee. I'm San Juan. Let's see if we can hear. They are going eight or ten. This is not good. I don't know. Them. Make sure of that. No shot then. It's gate three, no down. See, it's gate three, no down. I must say, it's like that. Say, The judges, by the way, are Ishmael Fernandez and Roberto Ramirez. The referee and both judges are from San Juan. And the knockdown rule automatically is waived. You've just got to keep getting back up as long as uh, the challenger or the champion feels it's right. And you can't be saved by the bell. Don King just came by and said, give him a great show, guys. We'll try. Round one. Ali with the hands very high. Cooper's supposed to be a guy that moves in fast. A jab by Ali. The fastest. But look out for the short right hand. That's the fastest punch of any heavyweight of all. Linebacker. Ooh, a straight right hand by Ali. Pops right on the cheek. A flurry on Cooper. Ali gave him a little roll with the hips. There's that jab. That's two jabs. Cooper's face is already red. The last two didn't do much. Ali is really toying with John Pierre Koopman in round one. Ali is 226. He's three and a half inches taller than Koopman with a lot more experience. Koopman's left eye has already started to swell. Ali had a cold all week. He had a fire in the hotel, had to breathe smoke. Looks like he's overweight at 226, and he's still the champion of the world, isn't he? There's the jab. He said, I'm good enough to beat most men fighting with a cold. And I mentioned Koopman is rated about 16th or 17th in the world, according to Ring Magazine. Not exactly a contender. Rank number one in Europe. He really hasn't had too much experience. Side of the country of Belgium only once. He went to Norway in 73 and lost that fight and stayed home ever since. Record as a pro is 24 3. There's the shuffle. The great thing going for Koopman is that he's in fantastic condition. The chopping trees and fighting the champion of the world are two different things. He's got a big tree to chop tonight. We're rope it open right now. A valley right above us. The face is red, Pat, on Koopman already. A minute to go in round one. Ali's round so far, no question about that. Watch the right hand, though. It comes right across, and good fighters say you don't even see that right hand right there. There it is. Bing. Another left. Again. That was sort of a semi-right hook, and he landed that one easily. Unanswered. One of the most relaxed athletes you'll ever see anywhere. Muhammad Ali. Just took a little glance at the crowd. Spoke to somebody. Koopman is only uh, a pro for three and a half years. What an opportunity for a young man, though, to get a title shot in three and a half years. Less than ten seconds left in round one. The mouthpiece is cut out by Muhammad Ali like maybe the pro. isn't breathing quite like he, you know, would like to, and it's good shape with the cold and all. But he is a funny man, even when he's serious. Koopman <laughs> has said that his favorite fighter has always been Joe Frazier. He's copied his style. So that's Joe, ever going forward. Joe Frazier is not uh, Muhammad Ali's favorite fighter. They've had three pretty fair country contests. Fair, I'd say. thought that Ali fights only in one minute first. He's sort of been picking his shots at the way he wants to do uh, all three minutes in the first round and a half.
someone in the crowd behind his corner a little bit. The uppercut, three left hooks in a row. I'm in under a little bit. Ooh! Cooper's in trouble. Dali is just flurrying with uppercut. Dye backs away. Ryan of Flanders can only go one way, right on in. Has Ali in the neutral corner, but not for long. Ali at 226. Koopman in long red trousers. They're down almost to his knees. And right now, a very red face. 112 left in round two. This is a cut on the left eye of Koopman. Look at the jab, Pat. And then the fake of the ball all under. He is just tying with him right now. He gave him about three double fakes and didn't throw a punch. Only two losses for Ali. 49 and two he is. A loss to Norton and of course a loss to Frazier. And he got back and revenged both. And a very active champion. A very active champion for the first two rounds of tonight as well. Now he's just holding the gloves down. Ooh, that jab comes out of the off the hip almost. Ali just toying with Koopman. 30 seconds left in round two. Scheduled for 15. Koopman uh, used to be a cyclist and a soccer player. Looks like he's on a bicycle now, running into trouble. Though. The uppercuts. Koopman covers up pretty well. Supposed to have a fair left hook. We haven't seen the hook. Ali's catching those with his open palms. He got one through a little bit. Don Dunphy is with us at ringside. What do you think, Don? Well, up to now, I can see that Ali has had more trouble with some of his sparring partners than he's had with uh, Jean-Pierre Coupe and the Lion of Flanders, who may leave here as the pussycat of Ponce Playa Beach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so far, I don't think he's hit Muhammad Ali. All right, Don. Uh, we're back into round three now. Ali just went out and sort of leaned on the fellow from Belgium, the Lion of Flanders. They have attempted to repair the damage to Koopman's left eye, but a little work on that, and it might be closed. Cut on the lower portion of the left eye. Ali now just holding him up and wrapping up the 206-pounder like he's a baby boy. He has a five-inch reach advantage, along with every other advantage that he has. 20 pounds, four inches, three and a half inches in height. Right now, he's just dancing. Think how frustrating it must be, though, for a young professional to be in there trying to do his best, and Ali is right now going for a walk in the park. There's the right-hand lead. Not much on it, only because he didn't want to put anything on it. A sellout crowd at Roberto Clemente Coliseum getting a little impatient now with the champion because he's not pressing things a little bit more. Boy, watch it when he gets on that toe, though, and throws that the left jab or throws that quick right hand. It is a very quickly loaded punch. There's the hook. Some people don't know it, but he has done a lot of great work with the quick hook of Ali. Of course, the right hand, everyone knows about that one. He faked everything then. Yeah, I think Don Dunford was right a minute ago. I don't think Cooper's hit Ali yet. Ooh, there were four jabs and a straight right on the forehead. That was a good stiff jab that time. I ain't another. On the ring side, we can hear those. Got one left hand in. There's that jab back for Ali. And trying to cover, trying to move in. That's the only thing he knows. Minute to go in the third round. Schedule 15, but it doesn't look like it'll last that long. That jab just keeps you at bay. Now the fake of the right hand, and he turns back. Ali just touching him with the overhand right, faking the bolo occasionally. It looks like that bothers Koopman very much, the underneath thing. Koopman hasn't been trying. He just hasn't been getting anything to try with. There's that short right hand. Koopman catches it. On the pork chop side there on the left side. There's the right hand again. 
Ooh, a lead right hand. Solid flush on the cheek. Right over the left hand is carried very low by Koopman. Another one. He's got to get... Well, he looks a little bit more on the serious side right now. He's got the hands high, and he's not joking as much. The left jab that he threw out this time was behind the good boxing stance with the right hand covered. Boy, that's four straight jabs. Koopman, again, has only la landed perhaps one punch in the first three. And of no value. Now he's making the hook. The left hand still being carried low by Koopman. The right hand will come right over by Muhammad Ali. There's that left jab, and this one was shot out by the champion. Two, three, four. Catching most of them in that left eye. It's already cut. Two jabs, and followed in by Koopman. Ali measuring. Koopman no longer coming straight on. Ooh, the left hook with a straight right hand by Ali. That was blocked. The jab made it. The right hand makes it. Two right hands. Size to gain the close on the challenger now as he rallies and throws a combination. There's the hook by Ali, two of them. Now he's onto the ropes. And this is with the right hand coming off. Ali. Koopman said before the fight, I really don't know how good I am. He's finding out. What a way to learn on the job training with the heavyweight champion. Perhaps one of the greatest boxer fighters of all time. Ali picking his spots now, and Koopman's face is beat red. Even as Ali withdraws, he manages to land three or four unanswered blows. The hook was partially blocked. Under with the hook, the straight jab. Boy, he's quick. Is he? Minute to go in round four. Left to the right. Takes a couple, one around the heart, the right hand, not much on it by Cooper. The jab was blocked. Ooh. The left hook by Ali. He just pulls the trigger so easily. And when he turns it over that way, he can drill you with it. There's a short right hand, not much on him yet. It appears he could really pull the trigger whenever he wants to with something and do the job. Not that Ali wants to torture this man. He says he has no feeling one way or another about Jean-Pierre Koopman. He hasn't been able to talk to it. He understands only Flemish. Right hand leads. Cup. Like a cup there by Ali. There's the jab again. Two hooks off of it. Round's almost over. Third or fourth. The upper cup of the right hand. Official or unofficial cards right now. There's Muhammad Ali with... Dini Brown and of course Angelo Dundee who's going to get out now before the warning. Ali very relaxed and not even sitting on a stool. There's the warning buzzer and they're conversing like they're outside looking at a shrine around here in San Juan or something. They're yeah, looking across the ring to see what kind of shape this man is in. The Lion of Flanders has been very tame so far. Ali shoots out two big jabs. Seems like the start of each round now he Affirms what everybody already knows that I'm here. Don't forget it. Ooh, the combination, the quick hook. And he's just standing in one place. Ooh, the stiff jab. Couple of body blows as Ali moved back. Now he's dancing a little bit up on the toes for the first time. There's the jab. Now you're going to see something. But carrying it pretty well right now. Oh, he can get on his toes. And a great set of wheels on this champion. Now you see, now you don't. Koopman's trying to cut down the ring, and he's finding that a little bit of a problem, too. Now he's got it. No, now he doesn't. The shuffle just a little bit. Two good jabs out of it. Just as you set to attack what he's doing at that moment, it changes, and suddenly he puts that jab on you like a rock. 
Eight ounce gloves. He looks in excellent shape. Some concern because he had that cold as to whether he'd be effective or not. But he looks in good shape. But he didn't seem to worry about the cold. All the smoke was rolling through the room that he was sleeping in. Look at that jab. I'm telling you, that is quick. That is awesome. And look at that movement. Again, he has no cause, really, to embarrass this young person. He just says, I don't know anything about him, and let's see what he's made of. Less than a minute now in round five. Koopman keeps coming, I'll say that. He said he would. $100,000 to the young man for Belgium. Not that young, anyway, 29 years old. Ali, of course, is 34, just 34 last month. Seems like only yesterday, doesn't it? He's catching us, I think. Oh, combination. Five in a row. Left and right too fast. Cooper is down. Cooper is down. Holding that left eye. He's trying to get up. Got to take eight. He's in good condition. That's all. It's all over. That's all over. Fourteen seconds remaining. championship against the Lion of Flanders, who never really roared at all. He hit him almost at will. And now the confusion of the crowd of people going in the ring. Tom Brookshire is headed up in that direction. And he'll be chatting with the champion in just a minute. With 14 seconds left in the round five, Mohammed Ali has knocked out Jean-Pierre Koopman. But you did get the 36th KO. What about it, and was it that easy? First of all, it wouldn't be right not to thank Almighty God, Allah, for my victory. I want to say hi, salam alaikum to all the Muslims in America, mainly to the chief minister, the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad, and my children, my wife, and all my fans, and also my man, Mr. Tom Jordan, great disc jockey in Dallas, Texas. But the fight itself, it was a tough fight. Man, I look like it, but the man hit hard. Wasn't he, it really a tough fight? Yes, he was awkward. He was awkward. He could take a lot of punches. He carried that left hand so low, I thought you were going to, you know, you laid the right hand on him almost at will, and yes. you jabbed him right out of his mind. Yes, he could take a lot of punches. And, uh, I hit him with a hard punch. It dazed him, but it didn't knock him out. His eye was cut. I hope he's not cut. Seriously. But I enjoyed the fight, and everything was nice. Also, I want to say hello to all my friends in Louisville, Kentucky, and Mel Sloan, and all my friends and school friends, and... Uh, James X. Webster and all my friends down in Louisville, and also again, I salam alaikum to all my brothers and sisters and the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad. All right, let me ask you a personal question just about the number of people that want to use some of your time up. Is it beginning to bug you everywhere you go? Everybody says you're the greatest, but they always want a little piece of you, Muhammad. Well, it's natural. <laughs> Having a slight cold. Yes, I know. It's natural when you're out of, uh, when you're on top, the people are pulling for you, such as down now. But it's all good while it lasts, but you never let it go to here. The main thing, material things in the world don't last long, and we can't take them with us, and I'm trying to get my spirit together, my soul, where after I'm out of boxing, I can still have something to look forward to, and that's God himself. You seem like you really have it together now, though. I mean that. I've known you for about 10 years, and it just seems to me like you really have it together. Well, after talking with the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad and studying Islamic teachings, it makes you wise and it makes you civilized. Okay, now you really had nothing against Jean-Pierre Koopman. No, he's a nice, nice man, real gentleman. 
He was smiling all during training and even when I got in the ring. What's the future? He's just had a chance at the title. Uh, from here on, I'm going on to try Jimmy Young. There's a lot of talk about Mr. Ken Norton. I want Norton bad after destroying Frazier and Fullman. People still think Norton can win. We want to give Norton a shot at the title soon. We want to give George Fullman another shot. I plan to get out at the end of 76 and it's up to the humble Wallace D. Muhammad on what I do from there because I would like to be a minister representing the Islamic teachers in America. I want to say also to all my friends and fans out there, you use the commercials and you promote everything on my name, so I want to promote one or two things. I want everybody to read that Balalia News, formerly Muhammad Speaks. It's Balalia News. Read that newspaper and find out what's happening in the world. All right, Muhammad, take care. Again, the fight was over rather quickly, not unexpected, and perhaps just the way it happened. Patrick, how you doing down there? Well, I'm in a little confusion. A lot of people climbing all over me. But as you just heard, Muhammad Ali and just saw Muhammad Ali has successfully defended his heavyweight championship. We'll have more from San Juan right after this stairs with Jack Whitty successfully defending his heavyweight crown, a fifth round knockout against the Lion of Flanders, Jean-Pierre Koopman. Now let's go to Tom Brookshire with Angelo Dundee. Angelo, your man came out and just threw the jab, 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 jab. Koopman never really had a chance. Well, he never gave him a shot to do his thing. Muhammad did his thing like I felt he would. And he got him at the end of that left hand was goodbye, daddy. Because once Muhammad could set the tempo with his left jab, ball game's all over. You know, he actually, when he does flurry, like during the knockout sequence, they're so fast you couldn't call them if you knew what they were. Does he I know, know what it. they all are? I'm curious as heck to see a replay. Cause I don't know what shot got the guy out of there. I know he got cut at the same time he got dropped. The same instant, when the kid started blinking his eye, they, I noticed he had two little rips over his eye. Mohammed once told me that the guys that are big enough to muscle him are too slow, and the guys that are quick enough are too small. Is there anybody, is Norton the, maybe the only guy that can stand up and fight him head to head? Well, I'll tell you one thing right now. We fight Norton, he knocks out Norton this time, because this is the better fighter than the one that fought Norton. Muhammad's really come along with his thinking, his maturing, setting on the balls of his feet. He can really bang now. I mean, which is going to be shown right here. Because he, he, he can take you out with any kind of a shot. They go to the right hand, boom, left uppercut. They come in sequence. Good left hook counter. I told you how to go left hook his right uppercut and since he no longer has to dance all the way and uh, does flatten out that he does have more punching power than ever before doesn't he? right uppercut did it Tom I just wonder what did it but that's what did it how much training did he really get a chance to do Angelo uh, I, I mean, mean you he said trained, two weeks but no no he trained uh, six uh, we were here a month he trained two months up in camp no he was in good shape uh, the weight showed at 226 